Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a watercolor popsicle directly in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. As always, the color swatch for this project is entirely free. There's a link to it right in the video description, so you can just tap on that, download, and install it. The brushes that I'm using for this are from my watercolor illustration brush set, but if you'd prefer to use other brushes to change up the style, you're more than welcome to do that. With Father's Day coming up later this month, this could also double as a Father's Day card or greeting or e-card. So it does make it a little bit of extra fun if you'd like to use it for that purpose too. I'm going to create a brand new canvas that is 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi and then we'll get started. Okay, I've got my canvas all set. I'm going to grab black to start with. So I'm just gonna double tap where black is to select it. I'm going to turn on my symmetry first. That way we can do a sketch layer of our popsicle and then we can paint everything in with our watercolor brushes. So I'm going to come over to the wrench. I'm going to come over to canvas, turn on drawing guide and then hit edit drawing guide. Down here, you just wanna tap on symmetry. It should default to the one vertical line. I'm gonna make that darker so you can see it better on screen. And if you're not, for whatever reason, seeing a vertical line, just hit options down here and make sure vertical is selected and assisted drawing is turned on. I'm gonna hit done. And now whatever we draw on one side will appear on the other side. From my brush set, I'm going to grab my sketching pencil, which is the second one. And my size for this is right around 7%. And really I'm just giving myself a framework to paint with it. So this does not have to be perfect. It's just being used as a template. So don't put any pressure on yourself for this part. I'm going to start off by drawing my regular popsicle shape. I don't like how that looks, so I'm gonna start over. Okay, that looks better. I'm gonna give myself a popsicle stick. And there's my general shape. All right, that looks pretty good. These sides are a little more tapered than I would like, so I'm just gonna correct that. And then I can erase away the part that I don't want. So this part, I never am hard on myself with. It can look like it's messed up in areas it's just being used as a guide. And I think I want my stick to just come down just a little bit further. Just want you to kind of hear what I'm thinking as I draw my sketch layer. Okay, so I like that shape, so now I can create everything else on top of it. I don't need my symmetry settings on anymore, so I can just hit my wrench and then just toggle off drawing guide and I'm back to where I want to be. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. This layer we're going to start painting our colors on. So I'm going to start off with my red. So tap on your red. I'm going to grab my heavy paint round brush and I'm just going to paint a little bit up here at the top. And it's okay if it goes out of the lines a little bit. And I usually make the edges be a little sketchy. With this brush, you wanna keep your stylus down the entire time you're painting with it and only lift up at the end because anytime that you paint with it and then you paint over it, it's going to show an overlap. This is the wet on dry technique. So you're just going to get denser color anytime you paint on top of something that you've already painted. So if you want that nice, beautiful texture coming all the way through with one density, then just make sure you keep your stylus down. Okay, on a brand new layer, I'm going to put my blue. Let me label this one red. This one's gonna be labeled blue. I'm going to grab my lightest colored blue, so it's the third one, and then do the exact same thing with the same brush. Now we're going to add in just a little bit more texture to both of these colors. So I'm going to create a brand new layer on top of my blue layer, tap on the layer thumbnail, and choose clipping mask. And whatever I do on this layer will just get locked into my blue layer. So I'm going to use the same color blue, but I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply so it'll appear just a little bit darker on top of this blue. And I'm going to grab my soft bloom stamp. And let me reduce the size of this. And I'm just going to stamp it a couple of times and you can see I've got some darker areas of blue now showing up within my blue. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the red. So create a brand new layer above it. Tap on the layer thumbnail, choose clipping mask. I'm going to grab my red color. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply just like before. And I still have my soft bloom stamp selected and I'm just going to use it to stamp in a few areas. This one's not quite as obvious. You can select a darker color if you'd like it to appear a little more obvious, but I really don't mind that shade. You can see it a little bit there too. Okay, so now we're going to start smudging our watercolor. So it looks like the colors are bleeding into one another. So we're going to grab our smudge tool and you're going to select your dense wash brush for this. And this size is about 4%. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on my red layer first. So select that one. And then what you're going to do is just start 
pushing some of this color forward. And the goal here, sometimes I'll stipple too, the goal here is to remove any trace of this line. So we're just letting these colors bleed. Okay, and if you have any troubled areas, like these areas, I'm having a hard time getting rid of those lines, I'll just switch to my bleed brush and stamp a few times and that will take care of it. If you have areas that are bleeding outside of your guidelines and you want them brought back in, start smudging from outside of your colors and push inward and that will push the colors back where you want them to go. Push over here. I'm going to do the exact same thing down here with my blue, so come to your blue layer. I'm going to return to my dense wash as my smudge tool and push these up. Come back to my spot bleed and take care of any areas that were more difficult. Okay, that's looking good. Let's preview what this looks like by turning off our sketch layer. And I can see that I want my red to bleed down just a little bit further here, and then that will be all set. So I'm going to return my red and just push this down just a little bit more. Now I'm going to come to my sketch layer, create a brand new layer right above it. And this one I'm going to paint with my white color. It's just a little bit off white, so it will appear as if there's a color there. That way it seems like these colors aren't just floating, at least they're tied together by a color. So I'm going to come to my medium paint round for this one and just paint where the white is. So you can see it's a very, very light shade here, but it will definitely unify these two where they blend. All right, so now we're going to take care of our popsicle stick. So I'm going to come back down my sketch layer, create a brand new layer right above it. I'm going to grab my light tan color right here. I'm going to grab my heavy paint round brush again, and then just paint the stick. And now we need to add a little bit of shadow on top of it. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it. I'm going to change the blend mode of this to multiply. And I'm going to grab my darker color right here paint this with the same brush. And now I'm going to smudge it. So I'm going to grab my dense wash again. I'm going to reduce the size down to 3% and smudge this. And there we go. Let's turn off our sketch layer and all that looks good. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is add just our final details. So with a lot of popsicles, the mold of the popsicle has those two defining lines in them. So there's a really, really easy way to do this. The way you wanna do it is come to the very top layer, create a brand new layer right above it. You're going to grab black. So double tap where your black is to select true black. And then I'm going to grab my medium paint round brush for this. And then you're just gonna draw in your lines. I'm just gonna freehand these. Remember to keep your stylus down the entire time that you're drawing the lines that we don't get overlaps because it'll really mess with this effect if you do that. And you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, so once you have this, you're going to come to this layer's blend mode where the little N is, tap on the little N and change this to overlay. So right here, and you can see it's very subtle. But now if I draw right on the side of it where there's a deeper shadow, you'll see that line getting darker because of the behavior of these brushes with the wet on dry technique. So I can do this a few times. And now when I zoom out, it looks like it's pushing in. So it looks like part of the mold. So I'm going to do it. On, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the second one. You just want to make sure that you're staying in the same lines here. That looks good. And now I'm going to put some paint splatter on it. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my red. I'm going to come to my rounded splatter brush and just paint a little bit of splatter on here and same thing with my blue. Okay, I'm going to change the blend mode of this to multiply, and then I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to change my color to black, so double tap where the black is, and now we're going to add in a watercolor paper texture, that way this looks like it was really painted on watercolor paper, but you need to have black selected. So select black, come back to your brushes, and down here I'm going to select my medium tooth paper texture, and these are paper texture pattern brushes. So we're actually painting the texture of a paper right on top of our canvas. So I recommend zooming out of your canvas because you wanna do this all at one time. Make sure your brush is up at max and then just paint until your entire canvas is filled. 
And once it's totally filled, you can see that really pretty paper texture showing up there because we brushed it on. And then just change that blend mode where the little N is, change that to multiply. And now you can see the effect it has on the colors. It blends a lot more beautifully. All right, so if you wanna make this for Father's Day, you can add some lettering at the bottom. I'll show you how I do that. I'm going to add this all the way down here. So I'm just going to tap on my sketch layer, create a new layer right above it. I'm going to select my dark blue color, and I'm actually going to grab a lettering brush from one of my lettering brush sets, my Font Lovers brush set. I'm going to grab my Jittery ink brush, and I'm going to turn on guides for this. That way I can see everything better. So I'm going to toggle on my drawing guide, hit edit drawing guide, switch back to my 2D grid and reduce my grid size just a little bit. Let me make this darker so you can see it. That way I've got a better grid to go by. My grid is at 43 pixels here. So I'm going to hit done and then I can write my message right in here. All right, reduce the size just a little bit and I can turn off my grid. Okay, so that is how to create a watercolor popsicle entirely in Procreate. Once again, links to the color palette and the brushes used in this tutorial are right in the video description. So just tap in there and you can have access to everything. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every hyphen tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.